Hello, BookTube. I'm back, and today I have four thrift shop finds. They happen all to be murder mysteries, and I just love murder mysteries, so happy to share them with you. There's two historical and two contemporary, starting with a historical. This is 1836 Ottoman Empire, Istanbul. It's the Janissary Tree by Jason Goodwin. It's the very first adventure of investigator Yashin, uh, who's a courtly, intelligent man who's called upon by the powers that be to solve, you know, awkward or uh, mysterious happenings. And uh, he has a distinguishing characteristic that most murder mystery protagonists don't have. He has a lot of the usual ones. Uh, he had the high cheekbones of the Turks and the slanting gray eyes of a people who had lived on the great Eurasian steppes for thousands of years. In European trousers, perhaps, he would be noticeable, but in a brown cloak? No. Nobody noticed him very much. That was his special talent, if it was a talent at all. More, more likely, as the Marquise had been saying, it was a condition of mind, a condition of the body. Yashim had many things, innate charm, a gift for languages, and the ability to open those gray eyes suddenly wide. Both men and women had found themselves strangely hypnotized by his voice before they had even noticed who was speaking. But he lacked balls. Not in the vulgar sense. Yashim was reasonably brave. But he was that creature rare even in 19th century Istanbul. Yashim was a eunuch. <laughs> Jason Goodwin is a very good writer. And this series just doesn't have, I've read them all, it doesn't have a dull book in it. So I highly recommend it, even if you're not, you know, typically disposed to historical murder mysteries. Next one is a contemporary. The next two, the, the two contemporary ones, are Titans, the, the greatest that, they're, that the 20th century had to field. First one is Ruth Rendell. This is a Wexford, uh, an Inspector Wexford mystery uh, called Not in the Flesh. Uh, and the, uh, the premise goes like this, the back cover copy. Searching for truffles in a wood, a man and his dog unearth something less savory, a human hand. Uh, the body, as Chief Inspector Wexford was, is informed later, has lain buried for ten years or so, wrapped in a purple cotton sheet. The post-mortem cannot reveal the precise cause of death. The only clue is a crack in one of the dead man's ribs. The police computer stores have a long list of missing persons. Men and women and children disappear at an alarming rate, something like 500 a day nationwide. So Wexford knows he's going to have a job on his hands to identify the corpse. And then, only 20 yards away from the woodland burial site, in the cellar of a disused cottage, another body is found. <laughs> uh, Wexford is... He's not a very charismatic main character. Uh, he's mainly a device that, Re that Ruth Randall uses to create the biting atmosphere of her books. And that atmosphere is wonderful. You really can't go wrong with anything she wrote. Although... I must speak for uh, my canine peeps when I say that only a human would say that a human hand is not as savory as a truffle. <laughs> uh, the next one here is uh, The Private Patient by P.D. James. It's a Dalglish mystery. Uh, and like all P.D. James novels, it is not about the mechanics of the plot. It's about the amazing prose that she just on roles for the reader and the amazing psychological twists and turns that the book takes. They do, they are well plotted. They're all reasonably well plotted, but oh my, I thought I'd read you a bit of the prose here. This is, the, they always have a, sort of a cold open where we, we get inside the mind of someone who is either going to be the victim or the perpetrator, but we don't know anything about them. It's all kept very skillfully vague. Uh, it was months since she had deliberately touched the scar now, slowly and delicately, she ran a fingertip down its length, feeling the silver shininess at its heart, the hard, bumpy outline of its edge. Placing her left hand over her cheek, she tried to imagine the stranger who, in a few weeks' time, would look into the same mirror and see a doppelganger of herself, but one incomplete, unmarked, perhaps with only a thin white line to show where this puckered crevice had run. Gazing at the image which seemed no more than a faint palimpsest of her former self, she began slowly and deliberately to demolish her carefully constructed defenses and let the turbulent past, first like a swelling stream and then a river in spate, break through unresisted and take possession of her mind. A large chunk of that quote was one sentence. Just incredible. 
And our last one is uh, historical. It's uh, Revelation by C.J. Sansom. This is a, a volume in her murder mystery. This is in 1536 in Tudor, England. Henry VIII is old and losing his mind and courting Catherine Parr, his last and, in my opinion, his most interesting wife. And um, a fiend, a human fiend, is going throughout London, killing people in ways that echo passages from the Book of Revelation. And, of course, this is in England charged with religious upheaval so that it adds extra weight to a kind of killer that no one has ever heard of before or a serial killer with weird ulterior motives and theatrical bent the hero of these books is a hunchback lawyer named matthew shardlake who has worked his way up through the court system and has gained the trust of powerful people including our old friend uh, archbishop cranmer <laughs> who who at one point says uh, fire. It's a terrible way to die. The heretics I have pleaded with begged to, to recant. I frightened them by telling them of the skin shriveling, the fat melting, the hissing and crackling. I would have saved them if I could, but the king is always adamant for the harshest punishments. Once it was Catholics he thought to persecute, but he is returning more and more to the old ideas in religion, a Catholicism without the Pope, and it gets harder to persuade every year. Of course, you're supposed to detect a cruel irony in that passage because Cranmer himself will be burned at the stake. Uh, but that, that kind of intelligence, that kind of folding meaning upon meaning is all throughout these books. They're all big. They're all satisfying. It starts with a book called Disillusion, which is the most programmatic. It's still enjoyable, but it's the most predictable of them all. The, the later ones, the ones that are huge like this, uh, just become historical novels into which a murder mystery has been lightly interpolated. And uh, like the rest of the books in this quartet, I can't praise the series high enough. If you see these things, get them, especially if you're, good lord, if you're a murder mystery fan, you haven't read P.D. James or Ruth Rendell, get on that right away. <laughs> but that's it. That's all we have for today. Four wonderful whodunits uh, that I couldn't resist sharing with you. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow, probably with new books, uh, but we'll see. Thank you, Booktube.